viewers again, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the things that I had wished I had known before we built our house or before we built the Skypod. A few videos ago, I talked about the things I wish I had known before I had gotten married. And this time, I'm taking it a step further by talking about our home, which took us a long time to build. We had a lot of sacrifices and we have learned a lot of lessons. So if you guys want to see or hear what those lessons are, then please do keep on watching. Let me start with something that I wish I had known, of, of course. Something I wish people had told me before we built a house and that is number one, is expensive. It's so expensive guys, like grabe. Number one, Stating the obvious, I've never had to pay for electricity in my life apart from the time when... When was the time when I paid for No, I've actually never had to pay for electricity in my life because my mom and my dad have always got my back. So even when I was studying in Manila, they paid for my electricity for me when I was on my own. I've never had to pay for my water bills and even groceries. I've only ever had to pay for groceries when I studied in Paris when I was 18. But then again, at that time, I was still living off my allowance. So it was still my dad technically who was paying for it. And so I've never really had to take money out of my savings to pay for all my living expenses. So that's why I could afford shopping or investing in things that I could use to grow my business or my blog. And I'm very fortunate to be able to do that because not a lot of people are able to do that. And so I'm very, very thankful to my parents. In the Philippines, it's normal. And if you grew up in a Chinese family, it's totally normal. So to those of you watching who aren't from the Philippines or who aren't Filipino Chinese, then it may come as a surprise to you. But um, in this part of the world, it's totally normal. And again, thank you so much to my parents for allowing me to do that. Now that I live on my own though, and now that Slater and I are married and we have to take care of each other, now we have to spend for everything and it's so expensive. Not just that not just the expense of like the water bill the phone bill the Wi-Fi the cable the, all these other subscriptions that we have it's not just that like you actually have to pay for every small little thing like for example tissue paper or the plastic bags that you use to take out your trash or like your brooms like every little thing oh my gosh I did not realize that we need so many things to survive pala. and apart from that obviously Seder and I had a budget when we decided to build a house together and in our heads we were like it's impossible na we're gonna go over this budget because we set a pretty decent amount aside to build a house but now that the house is not yet done but it's almost done we're way way over budget and so I think that you really have to take expense into consideration if you want to build a house. You really have to know that you can afford it. If you can't afford it right now and if you're taking out a loan, then know that you can pay for that loan so that it doesn't accumulate in the future like with interest and everything like that. And also have a little bit of a buffer because your computation for your budgeting is not always going to be accurate. So just take that into consideration. Second thing that I wish I'd known is that maintaining a household is not only expensive, but it takes up so much of your time. And I am a busy bee. I love hustling. I, I do so many things and I rarely had time for myself back when I was living with my family. And now that I live alone. It's like, where do I even, like, I, I don't even have time to do my nails. I don't even have time to do my hair. It's always in a ponytail now, or it's just like a big frizz ball. It takes a lot of time, especially for somebody who's a newbie like me. So for instance, we have two helpers here helping us out, but they don't like, for example, the girl, the helper that I'm assigning to cook, her name's Angie. She doesn't know how to cook yet. And so we kind of have to learn it together before I can pass on the torch to her and have her do everything. Or like when it comes to laundry, nobody's ever used a laundry machine before, me included. And so I had to learn all of that, how to use it, how to use a dryer, how to maintain it, what system I'm gonna use to like do the laundry in our household. Like for example, is it gonna be all of my clothes first or all of Slater's clothes first? Or are we gonna mix it together? How am I gonna wash the machine? Am I gonna wash it every week or every month? And for a newbie like me, it is a little bit overwhelming, but I also kind of enjoy the process. So that's another thing. Also, oh my gosh, I am sweating so much right now. Let me just turn on the AC. Ugh, sorry guys. <sighs> I turned off the AC to save on Corriente. That's also back to my point on number one. I never really thought about aircon, turning it on, turning it off or whatever, like 
I just figured we have to have the AC on all the time because we live in a tropical country and it's hot. But now that I'm actually paying for my own electricity bill, damn, I try to turn off the AC when I can, but that explains why I'm sweating so much right now. It's so hot. Anyway, moving on. I'm gonna move on to my third point. When you're building a house, I highly recommend that you really think about your flow, the flow of the house, like the layout, the plan, how you will move from one space to another. So it's not just like, architect, ito yung gusto ko, bahala ka na. You really have to think about, I think the number one thing that Slater always says is, important talaga yung flow. And now that the AC is on, I'm sorry if you can hear a little bit of a buzzing sound. I hope it doesn't bother you too much. So think about each area and how you can optimize it. I remember when we were playing with the plan of the house, Slater was always trying to minimize the number of doors. And I never really understood why, because you know I'm so lucky that I have him and he's already so used to construction and thinking about things like these, because I would just leave it all to the architect and not even think about it. But because he was so particular and because he knew all of these things and what to think about, now that I live in the sky pod, like, I always think to myself, like, had Slater not taken out the store, it would have been such a hassle because Every time I'd have to go out and have to open all these doors. And also when it comes to security, then I'd have to put security systems on each door. So instead of just having one door, then I'd have five doors and then I'd have five security systems, which would be more expensive. You know what I mean? So take your time, don't rush through it and really think about how you can optimize each space and how you can easily get from one space to another. Or for example, when I talk about flow, like it has to be easy and practical for you to live in that space. So for example, Slater made sure that the parking is covered there's a roof over the parking and that there's at least one door you can enter the house in that you won't get wet even when it's raining you know what i mean because initially the house the parking was far away from the main door so if it was raining you'd park your car and then you'd have to run to the main door and get wet so now that he considered that situation would happen he made an alternative plan and now it all works out so really definitely consider how you're going to use the space and how you're going to make it practical for your lifestyle Number four, you really have to be patient and you really have to put in the work. For example, when Slater and I were again planning our house, he kept asking me questions that in my head, you know, let's just ask the architect. The architect can do it. That's why you're paying the architect. But now looking back, I'm very, very thankful that Slater actually took the time to think about these things. For example, where each outlet should be placed in a certain room, like at what level, where the switches will be, how they're laid out, because it's so convenient. It's gonna be so difficult if in the future I tell him like, you know what, I need one more outlet in this particular wall. Then they're gonna have to like take that wall, part of that wall down and the electrician's gonna have to come in again. And if it's not the same electrician that built your house, then they have to figure out where all the wires are and everything. And it's just gonna be so complicated. So during the planning stage, definitely be patient and do it meticulously so that in the future you won't have to come in again and do double the work. Number five is to take it slow and enjoy the process because majority of the time if you think my house is gonna get done in one year and that's my timeline it's not gonna get done in a year. Slater and I wanted to finish our house in seven months and we ended up finishing it in ten months but up to now it's not yet even finished. So we moved in 10 months later. It was livable 10 months later, but the rooms are still unfurnished, most of the rooms. We still don't have like vanities in most of the rooms. You don't have a coffee table yet. There are a lot of things that can go wrong with your contractor or the, the, the suppliers that you choose. And so you need to be aware of that. And you need to be aware that your timeline will most likely never be what you think it is so instead of like stressing out that it's not yet done or like when can i move in etc etc just kind of really enjoy the process because once it's over it's over like you're never gonna have that moment of your life back again and it's nice to be you know always planning with your husband and spending time with your husband so uh, cherish a moment enjoy the journey and that will make the destination so much sweeter number six is sometimes your architect will design something for you that's very, very beautiful, very stunning, but you also have to really think about the practicality. Practicality should always be greater than design because if that beautiful design will just stress you out in the future, let's say she or he designs this wall for you with like intricate carvings and holes and weaves, but then in the future, you're just gonna think about all these little holes that I have to clean and brush and you know, it's just gonna be super stressful. My suggestion is, which is, Again, totally up to you if you follow it or not. But 
practicality is always greater than design. So maybe you guys can come up with a compromise, find a way to incorporate the beautiful design with something practical that you can actually live with in your day-to-day -day life, you know what I mean? So yeah, always think about the practicality of things. Number seven is a suggestion that Slater's dad was the one who really, really told him to think about because initially we only had parking for about two, three cars, if I'm not mistaken. But it's important that you plan for the future and not just for the now. That's supposed to be another lesson, but okay, well, I'll, I'll just briefly talk about it too. We only have two cars now, one for me and one for Slater. But if we only had two cars, then this house will only ever be good enough for two cars and parking space is very important like what if we have guests where will they park or in the future when we have kids where will they park or when our kids are maybe we have five kids and maybe these five kids will live with us until they're all 20 or 25 and they all have cars where will they park so always think about your parking and yeah always think about your parking and the next lesson is again design for your future so in the same way as the parking, design for your future because remodeling your house or demolishing your house or doing all these carpentry and works done when you're already living in your house is both difficult and expensive. Difficult because if you're already living in that space, you don't want people to come in all the time, strangers to come in all the time and like be in your space, you know, and affect your timeline. Like if I want to work and there's a carpenter always which is what's happening now there's a carpenter always like i can't fully be alone i can't fully be you know i can't have my privacy like if i want to do yoga i don't want to do yoga outside because then people can see me stuff like that it gets dusty depending on what you want to do for example let's say you want to retile a certain area of your house that's super dusty and noisy and you know it takes so much time and effort so as early as planning for your house already design for years to come so that you don't have to remodel in the future my next lesson is to make sure that you plan for your service area. So what I mean by service area is your laundry room, your dirty kitchen, your storage room, a place to hang your clothes after you wash them that can be hit by sunlight but still has a roof, a place for your generator, a place for your septic tank. Like these are things that people don't really talk about but they're so important. Make sure you have a good laundry room and a good place to hang your clothes because that's something that my sister upon building her house did not think about and now she hangs her clothes in her living room terrace which is an eyesore so every time she has guests over then she has to pull it out la 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 huh. so just make sure that the service area or the behind the scenes part of your house is well planned out so that it's just more convenient for you in the long run the next lesson that i'm gonna share is that the materials you use really matter so i would rather invest in fixtures rather than decorative pieces. For example, I'd rather invest in good quality tiles or good quality woodwork or good quality like countertops for my kitchen rather than like gold decorative pieces or like pillowcases or like, you know, things that I can easily switch up through the years because these fixtures are the ones that are very hard to replace. So might as well spend one time big time and get a good one that you think will not go out of style, that will suit the theme of your house and that will last you years because these are the ones that stay with you. And if you really want to update your house, then you can update your house with cheaper items like throw pillows or, you know, decorative pieces, picture frames or whatever. So definitely if you were to invest in something, I would say invest in fixtures or things that are fixed in your house and difficult to remove. My next lesson is don't scrimp on your kitchen because the kitchen is usually the main center point of your house and i've watched a ton of ad videos on youtube architectural digest videos and that's usually always the case when they do tours the kitchen is always the heart of the home and even if you have this amazing living room tendency is people will really culminate and hang out in the kitchen and that was a surprise to both slater and i because neither of us cook i'm just learning to cook right now but strangely when we have guests over everybody always culminates in the kitchen even if the kitchen is one space with the living room and the dining room. People always just stay in the kitchen. So definitely don't scrimp on your kitchen. If you can invest in good quality countertops, we invested in quartz because quartz is non-porous, so it's antibacterial. And also you can put hot things directly onto it and it doesn't stain or it doesn't etch unlike marble. So consider these things again, designed for your future. And if you can invest in these things and invest one time big time so you don't have to do it again in the future and my last lesson is ultimately i think the most important and it is to know exactly what you want do your research and really 
try to articulate what you want and communicate it well with the people helping you build your house so your contractors your suppliers try your best to really explain in detail what exactly you want why exactly you want it and what quality finish you want talaga to the dot sometimes you just can't say na ah, understood na yan, or ah, common sense or ah, standard standard practice na yan. because sometimes Common sense to you or standard practice to you isn't standard practice to them and you wouldn't want there to be any miscommunication. And I know so many different people na after building their house, they fought with their contractors. That didn't happen to Slater and I and I think it's because our contractor, number one, was very honest and really helped us. I don't know, he, I guess also because Slater was here every day and you know communicated well exactly what he wanted to the contractor so there was no problem at all. But definitely do that because it's good that they know what you're expecting and they know what you want so that when you move in also you get exactly what you asked for it's not less it's not more if it's more it's good but like at least you're all on the same page all right guys that is it for today's video i hope you learned a thing or two about you know building a house planning to build a house if you guys are in that stage in your life right now then i hope you found this video useful if you did and if you enjoyed watching this video then please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up comment down below what lesson you think is most useful for you don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell and i will see you guys in the next one bye